This video reviews the study and experiments led by lead researcher Dr. Monica Gagliano from the University of Western Australia Center of Evolutionary Biology at the School of Animal Biology, performed in 2010 and 2011 and presented in a research article. There are heaps of relating studies and information leading up to the hypothesis explored in these experiments. Although we may target or hypothesize a particular modality for plant communication and the signaling involved, let us remember that natural conditions for plants can involve the interactions of many different signaling pathways. I chose to review these particular experiments because they are a good starting place for considering bioacoustics in plants as another communication pathway. The first experiments were performed in 2010 and tested the ability of young chili plants to sense and identify their neighbors and relatives, even when all known sources of communication signals, such as chemical, contact, and light, were blocked. The hypothesis is that plants also employ alternative ways of communicating. The aim of this study was to look for evidence of such alternative means of communication. The study tested whether the presence of neighboring plants could influence germination rates of seeds when above and below ground contact, chemical, and light-mediated signals are blocked. In the event of an identifiable influence, the study also tested whether such effects on germination and growth differed depending on the identity of neighboring plant, both conspecific versus heterospecific. The experiment used seeds of the chili plant, placed them in the presence of a neighboring plant, and tested the influence the neighboring plant had on the seeds. The heterospecific neighboring plant chosen for the experiment was the Florence fennel plant. This species is known to exude chemicals both above and below the ground that inhibit growth or kill its neighbors. The testing expected the presence of the fennel plant to retard or block germination and or growth rates of the chili in open contact, and to have progressively smaller negative effects as its signals were partially or totally blocked. When growing together in open contact, volatile chemicals from the fennel plant will negatively affect the chili plant. When the chemical and light mediated signals are isolated and blocked, the chili plant should grow without influence and effects from the fennel plant. Chili seeds were also grown next to a neighboring adult chili plant. Chili seeds were also grown next to an empty neighboring unit. In this diagram, A equals a group of eight petri dishes containing chili seeds, arranged in a circle around the adult plant. The adult is either exposed or sealed in a central cylindrical box. B shows us the seeds and adult plants are housed within two different size square boxes with the air in between the two boxes removed using a pump to create a vacuum. The percentage of seed germination over time was higher in treatments where fennel was present than in the controls. Seeds germinated significantly faster when fennel was present even when all known signals from the fennel were blocked. Seeds growing next to a fennel plant isolated in a central cylindrical box exhibited significantly faster germination rates than conspecifics growing in an identical condition, indicating the seeds were somehow able to discriminate the presence of a plant, even when the plant was fully isolated in a box. When chili seeds were growing next to an open or isolated neighboring adult chili plant, the chili seed germination and growth rate was less than when chili seeds were growing next to an isolated neighboring fennel plant. 
Somehow, the chili seeds were able to identify the negative threat of the fennel plant. In return, the seeds responded with a better germination and growth rate. When chili seeds were growing next to a non or less threatening neighbor, the seeds had less need to expend resources to modify their growth. The chili seeds were able to sense a negative condition or negative potential through an alternative communication pathway and compensate. Seedlings are allocated energy to their stem and root systems differently depending on the identity of the neighbor. The result of the second experiment, follow-up growth experiment, May 2011, were consistent with the results of the first experiment and continued to support the chili plant's ability to sense their neighbors, even when all known communication channels were blocked. In this study, no changes in the number of leaves or branches across treatments was observed but significant differences in chili seedling height was. Seedlings were consistently taller when growing next to an adult fennel than an adult chili plant. Seedlings growing adjacent to an adult conspecific allocated significantly less to their roots than did seedlings growing adjacent to an adult fennel or in the control. As seeds grow into seedlings, they are able to discriminate among neighboring species and modify their growth patterns accordingly, without necessarily relying on known detriments, such as volatile chemicals, direct physical contact, or changes in infrared light wavelengths. Because the acoustic pathways were not isolated and blocked in these experiments, it allows us to consider sound as another modality by which plants exchange information. Once again, definitely follow the link and check out the research article for heaps of details and discussions about the experiment and results. Wow, wow, wow.